Hi everyone, JJ here. Welcome back. Well, yes, today this Bloomberg report came out about a fatal Tesla crash showing the limits of full self-driving right before the Tesla RoboTaxi launch this month. And we've also got some Tesla Elongelicals talking about this, saying it's a FUD article, fear, uncertainty, and doubt because of the timing of it. And we'll look at what they say. We'll look at some video and get into the article. So they say, as Elon Musk touts robotaxis in Austin, where it's going to be launched, federal regulators are investigating whether the system is dangerous, even with a human behind the wheel. So still dangerous. The report on this accident is from a while ago. This is some of the visuals they have. You can see it involves sun glare. So that's the main topic of this video. We're going to look at the sun glare example and the supposed difficulty it's having with it still footage from a front camera on the tesla shows the bright sun setting sun glare becomes more pronounced around the curve so this is leading up to that accident and they say in the article the setting sun was blinding drivers on the arizona interstate between flagstaff and phoenix in november 2023 so that is a while ago and what the Elongelicals, what the Tesla influencers will say is that it's much more advanced than it was back then. So this was a fatal accident. We don't see any of the carnage or anything like that, but, you know, it's pretty sad. So Jonah's story was that Jonah's story was traveling with her daughter and a co-worker in a black Toyota 4Runner around a curve that turned directly into the glaring sunlight. They pulled over to help direct traffic around two cars that had crashed. Back before the curve, Carl Stock was behind the wheel of a red Tesla Model Y. He had engaged what the car maker calls full self-driving or FSD, a partial automation system Elon Musk had acknowledged 18 months earlier was a high stakes work in progress. In a few harrowing seconds, the system's shortcomings were laid bare by a tragedy. The Tesla hit story a 71-year-old grandmother at highway speed. She was pronounced dead at the scene. And so this is what happened. We can see the, the lead up here. A car in the right lane begins to break. The Tesla appears to maintain its speed. I'm going to put a link to the story in the description of this video, by the way. This is not the whole story I'm laying out here, just some bit of highlights from it. So you can go and see that if you want to. And I do encourage you to do that to see the full story. More vehicles with hazard lights are parked on the right shoulder. The Tesla still hasn't braked as they come into view. And then a person waves to get the Tesla driver's attention. The Tesla veers left, so left towards the person. And that person had walked back from where the accident scene was apparently to do this to warn traffic. I think that was what happened. And the Tesla sideswipes the forerunner and hits Yona story head on, so parked on the side of the road, and apparently it hadn't slowed down the Tesla, so it was a fatal accident. The fatal collision and the involvement of full self driving came to light because of standing general order from the NHTSA or NHTSA that requires Tesla and other car makers to report crashes involving cars with driver assistance systems engaged. Tesla reported the crash seven months after the incident, according to data collected by NHTSA. And more stories death, one of 40,901 US traffic fatalities that year was the first known pedestrian fatality linked to Tesla's driving system prompting an ongoing federal investigation into whether full self-driving poses an unacceptable safety risk. Now, a spokesperson from NHTSA, they say, said the agency will take any actions necessary to protect road safety after spending years investigating autopilot, a different suite of Tesla driver assistance features. The regulator found that the car maker hadn't done enough to prevent drivers from misusing the features. Bryant Walker-Smith, a lawyer and engineer who advises cities, 
States and countries on emerging transportation technologies warned that Tesla's push to deploy driverless cars may be premature. They are claiming they will be imminently able to do something, true automated driving, that all evidence suggests they still can't do safely. And there have been other accidents. Two months after Story's death in Arizona, a Tesla Model 3 with self-driving engaged crashed in Nipton, California in January 2024. So the beginning of last year, another Model 3 crashed two months later in Red Mills, Virginia, followed by another two months later in Collinsville, Ohio. In all four incidents, and this is crucial, the collisions occurred in conditions that reduced roadway visibility, such as sun glare, fog, and airborne dust. So those are the things that have been in question, whether the system with cameras and AI can handle these particular conditions. And the following week, Musk took time out of Tesla's quarterly earnings call to advocate for a federal approval process for the deployment of autonomous vehicles to supersede state-by-state -state regulations. He said, if there's a department of government efficiency, I'll try to help make that happen, he said. And this goes on to say how much money he gave. And we all know what happened there with him and Trump and donating a huge amount of money and going in there with Doge. And the article continues, last month NHTSA sent a letter asking about basic elements of the company's robo-taxi plans only weeks before its slated launch in Austin. And I did do a video about that. I was really surprised that they still had questions that Tesla hadn't seemed to be talking to them, working with them leading up to this when it was so close. So the director of NHTSA's Office of Defects Investigation asked Tesla to describe each of the sensors the company planned to use for its cars to perceive their surroundings and how the company intended to ensure safety in conditions where roadway visibility is reduced, including sun glare, given that fatal accident that happened. And in an earnings call, an equity analyst from Wells Fargo asked Elon later during the call about how Tesla expected to get around the issue of sun glare overwhelming its cameras. And Elon said, actually, it does not blind the camera, citing a breakthrough we have made some time ago. So he basically said they had fixed that issue about sun glare. You know, you're still sticking with the vision only approach. Uh, a lot of the time, those people still have a lot of concerns about, you know, sun glare, fog and dust. A any color on how you anticipate on, on getting around those issues? Because I, I, my understanding, it kind of blinds the camera when you get glare and stuff. Uh, actually, it does not blind the camera. Quite a big breakthrough that we made some time ago was to go with direct photon counting and, and bypass the uh, image signal processor. And uh, that, and then you can drive pretty much straight at the sun, um, and you can also see in what appears to be the blackest of nights. Here in fog, we can see as well as uh, like people can, um, probably better, but in fact, I'd say probably slightly better than people, um, than the average person anyway. And um, yeah, so, so the camera is able to see when there's direct glare on it. I'm yeah. Surprised that I'm there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's what Elon said, that they've fixed that problem with sun glare. And needless to say, Elon Musk has bet the entire company on this philosophy that current tester vehicles are capable of being a robo-taxi, given the launch is just not long away, just days away apparently, if they don't delay it. Said Michael Brooks, executive director of the Center for Auto Safety, a Washington-based advocacy group, we know the FSD system is camera-based and sun glare can inhibit camera-based operations. So there's definitely some conflict about what people think, what some experts think, and what Elon is saying. So this is Holmar's catalog. Omar is his name. He's a Elongelical Tesla influencer. And he wrote in reply to this article a screed that was over a thousand words long. And so I'm not going to read it all out here, but he is basically saying that Bloomberg is out with a new FUD story today trying to smear Tesla ahead of the robo taxi launch this month. So this is what these Elon Jellico, the Elon influencers are saying. 
and they are you know stock investors so they've got a lot invested in the company generally and so there's a lot at stake basically the whole company because elon has staked you know the whole company on this working and we'll see a little bit more not the whole thing about what omar's saying here but for that if you're getting value out of this episode so far do remember to hit that like button to help the algorithm to spread it to more people it does help big time thanks for that i appreciate that and so omar says to show why fsd will never work they are highlighting a tragic crash from november 2023 running fsd 11.4.4 which obviously is a much earlier version really he says forget about the next gen unsupervised model we haven't seen yet they couldn't even find an example from FSD 12, let alone 13 or 14. Those using FSD know the system has gone through a complete rewrite since FSD 11. So hold that thought because I have a video of sun glare being a problem just in the past few days. He's saying there that the next gen unsupervised model that we haven't seen yet. So presumably, you know, there's a model coming out for FSD supervised in Austin. It's so good that there'll be no problems. And so Omar also says the fundamental premise of the Bloomberg story is that Tesla couldn't see what happened or respond correctly because the cameras were blinded by sunlight. But this is incorrect. All of the information that the car needed to respond to was in the footage which Bloomberg published. The problem was that the AI FSD Beta 11 wasn't advanced enough to respond correctly, not that the camera couldn't see so he's basically saying that it's driver error here this was at its core a distracted driving crash that resulted from another earlier crash on the highway that was why the people were on the road it's clear to me that a more advanced vision system like fsd 13 or maybe even fsd 12 could have prevented this crash and here is an example just in the past few days of somebody showing that this is still a problem. Jake Smart says, I love Tesla FSD. However, the direct sun issue needs to be addressed. Elon Musk claims it can just drive through and be fine. But clearly this proves otherwise. I drove through multiple times to see if it was repeatable. And it was. Let's just have a quick look. It's a short clip. Okay, so it disengages here. I mean, you could argue in that fatal accident that if it had disengaged and it alerted the driver, perhaps that accident would have been avoided. I'm not to say what happened there. You know, there's an investigation, but still clearly there's a problem with that. The sun glare did, you know, they did have to stop. But, you know, if you're in a robo taxi, for instance, and that happens, is it going to slow down and pull to the side of the road? What would happen there? It seems to be unclear. Or will the new system, as he said, be so good that it deals with that? Elon already said that they've dealt with that, and that's clearly not true, based just based on that video alone. And somebody else here says about other issues as well, and remember that the RoboTaxi launch is just really days away, supposedly, haven't paid for FSD in months due to zero improvement, but got sucked into another month hoping for progress with the June 12 RoboTaxi launch. Phantom braking is still absolutely horrible. My insurance app tracking drives for a discount scores FSD poorly. Disappointing. And we have this from a community member who sent this to me. This is just from Sunday, June the 1st, and problem that they had with FSD in their Cybertruck on an LA freeway. You can see it's on a bridge. Kind of a dangerous situation. They were lucky that something worse didn't happen here. If you look, that you know, it's a great height from this bridge. But let's just have a look at the video, and you'll see what happens. See that it hits the side of the bridge there. Veers off again. This is a side view. Bang. So that, and that's a, this is the damage that happened there 
wasn't a huge amount of damage on the side, which I guess is good. The wheels probably got damaged there. He said that Tesla didn't offer any compensation for that. He's saying that. But that is what's happening just a few days ago with FSD. Now, I haven't got the version that he's using. I will put that in the description if he updates that. I just asked in an email and he hasn't replied yet. I'm making this video anyway. Presumably, it is the latest version. So what do you think of all this? Let me know in the comments. So what's your view of this? The launch of Robotaxi is just days away. And it's sunny in Texas. That, that fatal crash was in Arizona. It's sunny in California. So it has been known to have problems in, you know, winter conditions, but in these sunny conditions, even in the best of conditions, when there's low sun, is this going to be a problem? Would you get into a robotaxi based on this, do you think, just yet? I mean, Waymo's had a good safety record. Is Tesla going to have a good safety record too? What are the conditions they're going to have in Austin? Tightly geofenced in a very safe area to begin with. That would be my guess. And with teleoperation, that's what I've said before, I don't know. But let me know in the comments what you think. And right now, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to put a related video there. Do go and see that now if you want to. And a subscribe link on screen. Do subscribe if you're not ready to get more of these kinds of videos in the very near future. And thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next one.